Well, now that we've entered an election year, pollsters are ramping up all that good horse race polling ahead of November 2022. But one pollster is arguing to bow out of horse race polling in the aftermath of the 2016 and 2020 elections, writing, if we cannot be certain that these polling misses are anomalies, then we have a responsibility to consider whether releasing horse race numbers in close proximity to an election is making a positive or negative contribution to the political discourse. This is especially important important now because the American Republic is at an inflection point. Public trust in political institutions and our fundamental democratic processes is abysmal. Honest missteps get conflated with fake news, a charge that has hit election polls in recent years. Now, director of the Monmouth University poll, Patrick Murray, is here with us to discuss. Welcome. Uh, good to be with you. Yeah, absolutely. This is a very interesting question because it raises the interesting question, another interesting question of whether those course corrections that just about everybody across the board uh, agreed were necessary, especially after 2016, ever actually happened, ever actually came to fruition. Um, what insights do you have on that? Well, I think one of the, the problems that we're having is that we're it, it's becoming much more unpredictable in terms of who an electorate will be from year to year. Um, we have some sense of what, uh, you know, the general trends will be. Uh, certainly we knew that there was going to be some sort of blue wave in uh, 2018. Um, and the polling was actually pretty good in that year. Polling has been pretty good overall. Uh, what, what I was looking at was uh, this last year where we had two governor's races uh, in that off year in 2021 in Virginia and in New Jersey. The Virginia polling was, was by and large pretty good. The New Jersey polling was not uh, using the same methodology. Uh, and the, the question isn't really about what polling uh, can or cannot do uh, in terms of our methodology and you know of the little fixes that we can make. Polling will always have its share of hits and misses. The problem when we get into election polling is that we're asking polling to do something that it can't, it really isn't designed to do, which is predict something that will happen in the future. Uh, also predict who the electorate will be. That's the key part of it. And that's getting harder and harder to do on a consistent basis. We can still do it because we've always had misses in the past. And we come back and said, well, we expect those misses. The problem that I see today is those misses no longer are accepted as honest mistakes and, and just part of the process. You're never going to get 100% right. You're never going to hit a grand slam every time you, you uh, get up to bat. Um, but nowadays, uh, we're in a situation where those misses are used as evidence that there's something nefarious going on. And that undermines everything else that we do in polling that, that has nothing to do with election polling, but has to do with measuring you know, the, the, the fundamental state of our republic and our and our polity in a lot of countries around the world it is just kind of straight up illegal to publish polling you know within a certain amount of right. time of of the election no other country has a first amendment like we do and so that sounds effectively impossible to Im implement here under the current constitution uh, but what has been the effect in countries where they where they ban that on people's participation and people's trust in in the process and are you suggesting that we do something similar here or, you, or, or do you think we that pollsters ought to get together and kind of uh you know collude so to speak to not release numbers in the in the weeks before the election the way they do with yeah, exit think, polls yeah. for instance like they do suppress exit polls until the polls are closed Right, and that's a, that's an agreement among the networks right. uh, to do that, and that happened um, after the 2000 election, uh, in particular. That, that that was an agreement with Congress that they wouldn't do it, but because because you can't really enforce it, as you said, there's you know the First Amendment prohibits you know, an enforcement of some sort of ban on that. And if you look at what other countries do, of course, we have we would have to compare everything about those other countries in terms of uh, their civic engagement to begin with. Uh, you know, some countries like Australia, it's also illegal not to vote. You get fined if you don't vote. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, uh, yeah, so we can't make that direct comparison. But so what I'm saying is I'm looking at what my responsibility is as a pollster. Other pollsters have already pulled out of, of horse race polling uh, even before uh, any of this happened. Uh, Pew, the Pew Research Center, Gallup uh, polls, you know, some of the top polls in the country have said they're pulling out of it because it undermines the value of all everything else that they do, tracking things like COVID, uh, attitudes towards vaccinations, just to give a more recent example of where polling has been very good at understanding what's going on and helping us uh, understand things that, that have a real political uh, or, or a policy impact uh, on the world. 
Um, so, um, you know, I just decided I was going to lay down the gauntlet um, <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I could continue to try to, you know, we're going to make fixes and, 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 you know, try to get election polls right. And I, and I think we can get them right most of the time. But the question becomes is that those those times when we, we don't get it right, which are honest mistakes, are no longer perceived as honest mistakes and um, contribute to a real deepening of the, this public distrust in institutions. Um, and the, the question that I have is, can we really play a part in it? What value do we bring to the table when we're just, when we're saying, you know, one candidate is ahead of another candidate by six or seven points? Does that, does it really contribute to uh, the, the dialogue? There are other ways that we can do election polling that don't necessarily need to use the horse race, mm -hmm. such as candidate uh, uh, favorability ratings, issue ratings, those kinds of things. But I want to unpack that for a second and take it to its logical conclusion. You know, if, if no longer doing uh, horse race polling is the solution because it undermines the rest of it, because when you match the horse race polling to the actual results, there seems to be a gap there that does undermine the rest of it. But then the question would be, why should people trust the rest of it? So in yeah. other words, if we're just doing COVID attitudes and there's no way to check COVID attitudes because people don't go and vote on what their COVID attitude is, then it's like, then it's as if pollsters can put out the numbers and be immune from it being checked in a real world scenario. Or yeah, is it about I think the turnout situation? Is that, is that right. the big problem? So you're not wrong about yeah. what public attitudes are, but you're wrong about who cares enough to go out and mm -hmm. vote and who's able to like get through the hoops to vote. Right, or, or who wants to. I mean, if, right. you, if you look at the, the myths that we saw in the New Jersey gubernatorial polling uh, mm -hmm. uh, last year, in a, in a race of where three million people came out to vote, it really was really a difference of about 150,000 voters. Uh, you know, if you have 75,000 fewer uh, Republicans, 75,000 more Democrats in key areas where we saw some real shifts in turnout, then the then the outcome would have matched the polls. Um, so it's it doesn't take a lot to change that. And I think that's one of the problems with election polls is that. Uh, you know, in, in when we poll on attitudes and also, you know, in COVID, one of the things that we do have a benchmark, we have a benchmark on actually vaccination rates. So that's how we know that the hmm. COVID numbers are, are pretty good. Our, our general polling, when we know who the population is, because it's the whole population, uh, then our polling is pretty good. It, maybe it's off by two points or three points, but that doesn't matter. What does it matter if, you know, in terms of trying to tell the correct story, if the actual number is 61% versus 64%, we know it's about six in 10. But when the when an election poll is off by three or four points, suddenly that's a huge right. miss. But it's a, you know, but it's a miss that, that polling is, right. is built sense. to have. I mean, you, yeah. you can't get away from that. And that's that's one of the problems. I think it's a perception of, of horse race polling, likely voter models, those kinds of things that, that create this problem. Right. Yeah. Patrick Murray, thank you so much for your insights on this. My pleasure. We will have more Rising for you right after this.